Chemistry, this is the answers video to the day 15 molar mass assignment. I'm going to give you selected answers. Uh, the rest you do on your own. Those are the ones that I really look at, but uh, you should have sufficient, uh, sufficient number of examples from this answers video to be able to do uh, the assignment, okay? So the first part of this um, includes a number of definitions that are straight out of the video on molar mass so you should get these answers from the video there is one exception that I edited out and that's what is stoichiometry so stoichiometry is defined as the mathematics of using a chemical equation and we're gonna get to that in by the end of this week okay so um, Alright, so stoichiometry is the math used to compute the quantities of reactants and products, that's what you put in and what you get out of a chemical equation. So we'll get to that in a few days as I say. The rest of these are in the video so you answer them from the lecture video. Okay, now we're going to come down here and do something that you need to become good at and that's computing molar masses, okay, atomic masses, molar masses. So this is asking you to compute the atomic mass and molar mass for each of the following. All right, so to do this, you need uh, a periodic table, just your standard periodic table, your yellow one that's on the front of your packet. And we're gonna compute the atomic mass and molar mass for these compounds. So here's carbon dioxide, CO2. So what you do is you break it down into its elements. You have a carbon and oxygen, and then you have CO2. Okay, so first number you put is how many atoms do you have so you have one atom of carbon and then you have the atomic mass right there it's 12.01 and you multiply those two you get 12.01 AMU okay now, for oxygen, you do the same thing. Now, you have two oxygen atoms. From the periodic table, 16. You should write it to the proper number of significant figures, 0 .00. Okay, so now to get the total for CO2, you add these two. That's the mass of a carbon dioxide molecule. Okay, so now the molar mass is the same number but in grams and G for grams. So that's how you do this, all right? It's just adding up atoms and the masses of atoms, okay? All right, let's do this one together. See if you can do it. You should always try to do everything. So you notice something very common that you, you know, you tasted in your life peppermint, and that's the chemical formula for peppermint. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. So this simply means the molar mass is going to be, and molar mass is abbreviated MM. And it's in grains. All right, so you go ahead and do acetic acid and vanilla. You can see that all these food products, or um, this is a vitamin, have very similar uh, chemical um, uh, elements involved. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, oftentimes you'll see nitrogen, but there's not a whole lot of uh, different elements in food products. Okay, so what we're gonna do is come down here and we're gonna start working of just a few problems similar to the one in the video. So what we're doing, we're gonna start with carbon dioxide. Um, CO2 right here so it's a carbon and oxygen and then the molecule CO2 so it requires one atom of carbon two atoms of oxygen and you put those together to create one molecule of CO2 again you don't add these numbers uh, as was mentioned in the video you need two wheels and one seat to make one bicycle not three bicycles okay so now you're gonna go to your periodic table Again, carbon, I just want to keep emphasizing this, that's where you get the number 12.01, the atomic mass of, of a carbon atom. For an O2, now you're dealing with two oxygens, so it's two times 
this number right here, 2 times 16 is going to give you 32, and now you do add these numbers to get 44.01 AMU. That's for a single molecule of carbon dioxide. Now over here, all we're doing is multiplying everything by 6.0 to 2 times 10 to the 23rd, a mole. So if you take one carbon atom and multiply it by that number, you get one mole of carbon. Now you might think for a second, well wait, this could have been any number. It could have been 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, or it could have been 1 times 10 to the 20th, or it could have been 1 times 10 to the 30th. It could have been any number, and if you multiply an atom by a mole, you get one mole. That's true. So this is, this is going to be one, mole, one atom to one mole, two atoms of oxygen to two moles, and one molecule of carbon dioxide to one mole. So again, the magic of this special number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, is not that one atom becomes one mole. It could have done that no matter what you defined a mole as. It's this number. It's that the 12.01 AMU will become the exact same number, 12.01 grams. And grams is what we measure everything in in chemistry. It's what all of our scales are designed to measure things in. So it gives you this, this, the number of AMU converts to the exact same number of grams. That, there's only one number that will do that, and that's this magic number right here. Okay, So 32 AMU becomes 32 grams, 44.01 AMU becomes 44.01 grams. Now this is something that wasn't shown in the video, and that's how many atoms or molecules do you have? Well, if you have one mole of carbon, then you have that many atoms of carbon. If you have two moles of oxygen, then you have two times that number, which equals this number. Now, if I ask you to compute these, you don't have to actually do this calculation two times 6.022. Just show two times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is fine, okay? If you wanna go ahead and do that calculation, you can, but you don't have to. All right, and finally, one mole of CO2 is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CO2. All right, so let's go down here and answer some questions. And I want you to write your answers out the way that I'm writing them out in complete sentences. If you just give me a number, I'm gonna give you, uh, I'm gonna mark that down, okay? And I don't wanna do that. Okay, so how many CO2 molecules in one mole of CO2? So right here, it says one mole of CO2. So let's look at this red box. Everything in this red box is referenced to one mole of CO2. So one mole of CO2 will take two moles of oxygen, one mole of carbon, one mole of CO2 will require 12.01 grams of carbon, it will require 32 grams of oxygen, and it will weigh or have a mass of 44.01 grams. That's all for one mole of CO2. One mole of CO2 will produce this many atoms, this many atoms of oxygen, and this many molecules of CO2. All right. So how many CO2 molecules are in one mole? Well, there it is right there, that number right there. So you write this out. Okay, so that's how I'd like you to write your answer. Now there's a couple things to notice. When you put the word mole in a chemical equation, it's not spelled with an E. They chopped off an E. Don't ask me why, but they did. So one mole CO2, that's not a misspelling, that's how you write it. The strange thing is there's no abbreviation for molecule, so you, you have to just spell out the word molecule. The thing I want you to notice is I have a unit of measure, molecules, and then the substance, CO2. I have a unit of measure, moles, and then the substance, CO2. So get used to writing everything as unit of measure and substance, unit of measure and substance. All right, I'm gonna skip down and do, I think what I'll do is the odd number problems here. No, I wanna do two. Um, how many grams is, it should be is one mole, so I'm gonna add a one there, is one mole of CO2. So one mole of CO2 is 44.01 grams, okay? So let's write that. Okay, again, unit of measure and substance. Unit of measure and substance. There are 44.01 grams CO2 in one mole of CO2. All right, um, how many moles of oxygen in one mole of CO2? I'm gonna let you do that one. There it is right there, two moles. So let's go down to this one, because now I have a number other than just one mole of CO2. So what do you do? How many grams of oxygen and 3.5 moles of CO2? So in one mole of CO2, there's 32 grams of oxygen. So if you want three and a half times that much CO2, three and a half times that number, you need three and a half times that number. So I want you to show the calculation as you write this out.
Okay, so there are 3.5 times 32. You want 3.5 moles, so you multiply that by 3.5 in 3.5 moles of CO2. And when you do that multiplication, you get 112.00 grams of oxygen. Okay. All right. We'll move on. All right, now you're gonna do water, H2O, and this chart was already filled out in the lecture video, so sh you should go back and refer to that. So I'm just gonna pause and fill this in, but you can go, if you need an explanation how to fill this in, it's in the lecture video. Okay, so there it is, as you saw it in the lecture video. Again, this column has been added here in the assignment. So if you wanna know how many actual atoms or molecules, it's the number of moles times what a mole is, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. This is one mole times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. These are atoms. And then for the water molecule, it's one times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do a few of these. And I will do two of these. I'll do five and six. Okay, so how many moles of oxygen in 0 0.73 moles of H2O? So again, you can draw your own box around this. This is what we're interested in over here is moles. And this little box is one mole of H2O. So in one mole of H2O, it wants to know moles of oxygen. So you first of all, go to oxygen, the oxygen row, and then you come over to the moles column. So there's one mole of oxygen for every one mole of H2O, all right? So, so that means if we want 0.73 moles of H2O, then we need 0.73 moles of oxygen, okay? All right, and that's all there is to it, right? That complete sentence. Okay, next, how many grams of oxygen in 0.002 moles of H2O? So in one mole of H2O, there's 16 grams of oxygen. Again, you go to the oxygen row, and the grams column, the mass, the molar mass column, grams. So if you want 0 0.002 moles of this, you need to multiply this by 0 0.002. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, there are 0 0.002 um, times 16 grams of oxygen, which equals 0. 0.032 grams of oxygen in 0 0.002 moles of H2O. So again, instead of if you want one mole, you need 16 grams. If you want 0 0.002 uh, moles, you need 0 0.002 times 16 grams. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish up with water here. And how many H atoms in 7.31 moles of, eight of water? So we got to come back up here. In one mole of water, right there, there are 2 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So if I want 7.31 moles of water, I need 7.31 times this entire number. So 7.31 times 2 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So let's go ahead and write that out. Okay, so that one's a little involved. Let me say that again. If you want one mole of water, you need two times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of hydrogen. If you want 7.31 moles of water, you have to multiply this entire number, 7.31 times two times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, and I'll just go ahead. It's okay to write it out like that and leave without the answer, but I'll go ahead and give you what the answer is. Let's just go ahead and do that. 88, and if you can move the decimal over, it becomes, you make that smaller, 8.8 .8 times 10. So you make the exponent bigger to the 23rd. Atoms, again, unit of measure and then the substance of hydrogen. That's what, that would be your final answer. But if you just wrote this, that's satisfactory, okay? Just that, just show the calculation without computing it, okay? <coughs> All right, let's keep going. Okay, next question. How many grams of hydrogen in 0.31 moles of water? So in one mole of water, there's 2.02 grams of hydrogen. So in 0.31, moles of water, there's 0.31 times 2.02 grams of hydrogen. Again, just go to the hydrogen row 
and the grams or molar mass column. Where those two intersect is the number you're interested in. Okay, two significant figures, two significant figures. So try to practice that whenever you get a chance. Okay, so that, that would be the number of grams of hydrogen in 0.31 moles of H2O. Okay, I'm going to skip past fructose, C6H12O6. It's not any more complicated than if there's two elements. You just have an additional element to deal with. So you need a C, an H, and an O, and then the chemical formula down here. Okay, and then go ahead and fill out the rest and do this. I'm going to leave this one for you to do entirely on your own. I'm going to move past and go to CH4, and I'll do, I'll do some of those with you. Okay, so here we are, CH4, so let's go ahead and write this out. Okay, so done exactly like all of the uh, earlier ones. Uh, this is an AMU, this is in grams, we're really interested in molar quantities, not individual atomic or molecular qualities, except we want to know how many molecules that would be. This is our way of counting molecules, something that we couldn't possibly count, okay? So how many methane, CH4 molecules, in 0.31 moles of CH4? In one mole of CH4, there are 6.022, so in 0.31 moles of CH4, there's 0.31 times that number. So again, you don't have to do the calculation for these, uh, uh, for these figures over here, okay? So... Unit of measure and substance, unit of measure and substance, you spell mole without an E when you're writing it in a chemical formula. Okay, next, how many grams in, is 1.9 moles of CH4? So one mole is 16.05, so 1.9 moles is 1.9 times 16.05. Oh, uh, 16 I would like you to do these calculations, just not the ones over here, too many numbers. All right, let's keep going. Do a couple more. Not going to do all of them. Uh, which one should I do? Moles of carbon in 0.1 moles of CH4. That's going to be an easy one. In one mole of CH4, there's one mole of carbon. So in 0.12 moles of CH4, there's 0.12 moles of carbon. Next one, how many grams of carbon in 1.04 moles of CH4? So in one mole of CH4, there's 12.01 grams of carbon. So in 1.04 moles of CH4, there's 1.04 uh, times 12.01. Again, it's important to write these complete sentences. So just a number doesn't tell you anything if you go back to study this. Write the complete sentence that explains the relationship, and that's why you know you don't get really don't get any credit if you just write a number down, even if it's the correct answer. Okay, how many hydrogen atoms? We'll do this one in 18.07 moles of CH4. So in one mole of CH4, there's four times this number of hydrogen atoms. So in 18.07 moles of CH4, there's 18.07 times four times the mole number here. Again, I'm not going to do the whole calculation. I'll just write out the equation. That's all you need to do. Okay, so there's 18.07 times 4, and times this number up here, times 6.022. That's how many atoms of hydrogen are in 18.07 moles. So you can see the magic of the mole is we can deal with uncountable and unseeable um, objects, um, atoms and molecules by knowing their mass, by knowing what they weigh. Okay, and that's, uh, without that chemistry doesn't exist, all right? So we're gonna go to one more page. And here, you're just computing what's at the end of the lecture video, the different types of um, ways of expressing molar mass, okay? This should be an NH3, it should be a subscripted three. Let's go ahead and do that one. So you can do your calculations here. So I'm going to do NH3. One 
one nitrogen. Come to your periodic table. Okay, and right there, nitrogen is 14.01 grams per mole, molar mass. So it's 17, one mole. Equals 17.4 grams, okay? So the molar mass, we'll write it right here, is 17.04 the equivalency is almost eroded entirely down there is this. Okay, one mole NH3 equals 17.04 grams of NH3. You could just write it that molar mass equals grams over mole, grams per mole. That's the shorthand. That's the way you often see it written in an equation. That's why you have to get used to that. Now the conversion factors, okay? You just put this one over this one and then flip it. Or, okay, so this one over this one and then flip it over, this one over this one. That's the conversion factors. Just like what we did a few lessons back when we were figuring out feet and inches and miles and all that. It's the same thing, okay? Uh, SO4 minus, um, okay, so, Again, that just means it's an ion. So let's do that one. To come over and get the atomic mass of sulfur, 32.07 right there. You have four oxygen. The, the ion, that negative sign means nothing to this. We're doing masses. Electrons don't weigh anything. Screen here. Okay, so that's the mass of one mole. That's the molar mass. So we're going to come up here and write all that out here. So the molar mass for SO3, and I blew it. You can see that I blew it. This, this, I'm going to change this. Sorry, we caught that. Hope you wrote it there. Do the same thing I did and make this one HBr. It's late, I get tired, okay? So just switch those two around. This is the NH3 up here. So now we're doing SO, um, SO4. Right, that's all you need to write there. The equivalency is, okay, that's the equivalency. One mole equals that amount. The shorthand is, I'm just gonna write the number, grams per mole. It, what it means is 96.07 grams per one mole. There's an implied one down there on the bottom, even though you don't write it. So 96.07 grams for every one mole of this substance. And the conversion factors, you kind of have to write small here. Okay, so the conversion factors, you just put one over the other and then flip it. You have to write kind of small here. Okay, one over the other and then flip it. Okay, this should be enough examples for you to get through this assignment. I really checked the ones that I didn't do here, so be sure you get them all done. You got your own brain as your first resource. You got your teammates, your classmates as a second resource. You have me as a third resource, so there's no reason to not get these done. It's a little bit of a long assignment, but it's just you have to practice these to get good at them. Okay, so we'll see you on the next lesson.